The personal luxury car, a driver-focused luxury car, or at least a luxury car for those who prefer the driver's seat to the back seat. It's hard to believe now, but the personal coupe was derived from the sports car. As sports cars gained popularity in the early 50s, there were some buyers that were not enthusiasts and liked the image more than the reality. Wealthier buyers who preferred a few more luxury and convenience features, such as heaters and roll-up windows, room for an adult, and maybe some sound insulation. Cars that had looks, but were unlikely to ever see a track day. More of a driver-oriented luxury car, which is what Ford insisted the original Thunderbird was. Today, one would think this is a GT, but at the time, a GT was generally considered a sports car made for the street, while a true sports car was basically a race car with lights. For U.S. luxury brands, however, the answer was to take a standard luxury convertible and dress it up. Buick would be one of the first to offer such a car with the 1953 Skylark. They started with the top-of-the-line Roadmaster convertible, reduced the chrome and opened the wheel wells, and voila! a luxury sports car. Packard used a similar formula with the Caribbean the same year, even adding a hood scoop, while Cadillac went a slightly different direction, adding more chrome and weight to create the new Eldorado. But the car that would redefine the class early on would be the Continental Mark II of 1956, an ultra-luxury coupe like nothing else on the road. A car that was effectively replaced by the Ford Thunderbird in 1958. Unlike the two-seat Thunderbird of 55 to 57, the new Thunderbird was a five-passenger luxury performance coupe. Expensive for a Ford at over $3,600, but practically a steal when compared to the $10,000 Mark II. And the Thunderbird owned the class going into the 60s as its main rivals continued to be dressed-up standards, such as the Chrysler 300 and Pontiac Grand Prix. But that changed in 1963 with the introduction of Buick's Riviera, a car that could have been introduced as the new Cadillac LaSalle, but Cadillac didn't really feel that it fit their image. So Buick got it. And like the Thunderbird, it was a style leader offering both performance and luxury. And as competition heated up, the segment would continue to expand. Oldsmobile introduced the futuristic front-wheel drive Toronado in 1966, a car which Cadillac got its own version of the following year with an all-new Eldorado. So naturally, Lincoln returned to the class with the new Mark III, ignoring the previous Continental Mark III, IV, and V. And the concept was also appearing in Europe, although the execution was much different, more of a bigger GT car. Even in the U.S., with the downsized Grand Prix of 1969, the concept moved down into the intermediate segment, quickly becoming the popular choice of the 70s. Even the Thunderbird would move down to a mid-sized car in 1977. And we will look closer at these cars in another video. But the performance aspect of the segment was being lost in the U.S., and the European cars that probably would have fit the designation were instead being referred to as GTs. Porsche's 928 would never be considered competition for the Eldorado, but it was certainly closer to what the segment was supposed to be, while the American cars would be some of the biggest, plushest coupes of all time, with nothing resembling sportiness in spite of the huge V8s that powered them, with the Eldorado getting up to 8.2 liters powering the front wheels, even dwarfing the 7.5 liter engines in the Oldsmobile and Buick, the Buick still being rear-wheel drive at least, as was Lincoln's Mark series, now up to a Mark V, and the Thunderbird before it moved down market. But these cars, like all others, would be downsized by the end of the decade still not attempting to be performance cars, but significantly smaller than they were mid-decade. Perhaps the last American car to try to enter the segment 
was Chrysler's Imperial of 81 to 83, not quite finding its place along the downsized Toronado, Riviera, Eldorado, and Lincoln Mark VI. But what else would you consider the big SEC Benzes of the mid-80s? In fact, in the 90s, the segment seemed to have a revival that was all imports. BMW introduced the 8 Series in 1990 that ran until 1999. Lexus had the SC from 1992 to 2002. But it was Mercedes that would take control of the class, with the CL starting in 1992. Well, the American cars were dying off, starting with the Toronado in 1992. Lincoln's Mark VIII was the American car that perhaps fit the class best, but it still only lasted until 1998. And Buick's stylish Riviera disappeared a year later. The Eldorado would be the last to go in 2002, being replaced by the Corvette-based XLR, Not a great sports car value, but perhaps closer to the original idea of the segment. The class is considered pretty much dead now, with the CL being renamed the S-Class Coupe in 2015. In the current market, a luxury sports car would be considered a GT. A performance luxury coupe would also be considered a GT. And the idea of just a stylish ultra-luxury coupe is beyond most people's comprehension. So we have to wonder if maybe Ford wasn't right with the Thunderbird all along. What are your thoughts? As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below.